Hi everyone, I am Prithivi and I will be talking about the basics of plasticity in this video. We haven't completely understood plasticity yet and it is still an active field of research. Until few years ago, I never understood why do we study plasticity and where it is being used. Here are a couple of pointers to answer that. The first one is the fatigue. As you know that 50 to 90 percent of mechanical failure are by fatigue and the mechanism of fatigue failure is governed by the plastic deformation. Hence, in order to design better fatigue resistant materials and structures, we need to understand plasticity. The second one is in the manufacturing processes. Bulk forming, sheet forming and short peening involve plastic deformation. So, plasticity needs to be understood for the manufacturing process design. With that brief background, let me get into the basic points of plasticity. Let me start with the mechanism of plasticity. Metal plasticity is due to shear, whereas in rock or soil plasticity, it also depends on pressure. Let's focus on the metal plasticity here. Sliding of atomic planes over one another at the molecular level causes plastic deformation at the continuum scale. This is a uniaxial stress strain curve for a general ductile material. When you load the material beyond the yield stress, you get plastic deformation. There are two regimes with respect to the yield. The first one is the elastic regime. It is well known that the loading and the unloading curves follow the same path. The second one is the elastoplastic regime. In real materials, beyond initial yield, there will be both elastic and plastic deformation. In elastoplastic regime, the loading and unloading paths are different. The unloading path is elastic and will be parallel to this line. Let's extend this argument to the strains. Let's say we loaded the material to a point A in the elastoplastic region. Strain at A will be the sum of both elastic and plastic strains. Let me explain how to obtain them. Let's do an imaginary unloading from A. This was our initial strain epsilon A and after unloading we are left with this much amount of strain. In other words, we have recovered this much amount of strain upon unloading and by definition it is the elastic portion of the strain. This portion here, the yellow line, is the permanent deformation after unloading and this is the plastic portion of the strain. So, we have epsilon A as a sum of elastic and plastic strains. This equation is known as the additive decomposition of strain and note that it is only valid for small deformations. With regard to stress, there is only one stress and that is stress and there is nothing called as a plastic stress. This is a common misconception in the community. Let's consider points A, B and C along the unloading path. If you decompose the strain, you will find that all the points A, B and C have the same amount of plastic strain as shown and from the figure, it can also be seen that all A, B, C have different stresses. Although the stresses change, but the plastic strain remains constant. So, the stresses aren't directly related to the plastic strains or in other words, the plastic strains do not induce any stress. The stresses are related to elastic strains. For example, the stress at B is equal to the Young's modulus times the elastic strain at B. Now, the question is, what does plastic strain contribute to? Plastic strain contributes to strength. Let's load the material till Q and then unload it to R. And note that P is our initial yield. Now, Let's reload the material from R towards Q. One may expect to yield at Q dash which is the initial yield but the material yields at Q. That means the material has gained some strength corresponding to Q Q dash which could be related to the plastic strain epsilon P. When a material gains strength it is known as strain hardening and when it loses strength with plastic strain it is known as strain softening. With all that background let's see how to model plasticity. There are three elements to plasticity modeling. They are the yield condition, the flow rule and the hardening rule. The yield condition is regarding the question at what combination of stresses does a material yield. It is represented by the yield surface and it is denoted by the equation function of stress tensor equal to constant. Let me give a couple of examples in this. 
for the uniaxial case the yield equation is just sigma 1 equal to sigma y for the multiaxial cases things are a bit complicated and Tresca and von Mises yield surfaces are the well known ones I have shown here the von Mises yield surface which is an ellipse in the principal stress domain if the stress state is on the surface then it is in the elastoplastic regime if the stress state is inside the surface then it is in the elastic regime note that the stress state can never go beyond the yield surface the second one is the flow rule which gives a mathematical description of how a material flows beyond the initial yield it is roughly a relation between plastic strain and stress it can be in various forms like the direct form or an incremental form or the rate form as shown. The third one is the hardening rule which gives a description of evolution of yield surface with plastic strain. In short, it describes how the constant k of the yield surface equation evolves with the plastic strain. There are two basic models. The first one is the isotropic hardening. The second one is the kinematic hardening. So I'll explain these two in a different lecture. Lastly. The current state of art is the dislocation based crystal plasticity model. So with that I have finished the basics of plasticity. Thank you very much for listening. Here are the other solid mechanics videos in my channel which could be useful. So if you have any questions or comments please let me know.